Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a very exciting and wonderful way to come to the U S to work, to have your business here and to be here for a really extended amount of time. We're going to be talking about the E2 visa, and I'm so excited to have my colleague attorney Kat Leah Bobes with us today on this podcast. She's going to break it down for us about what this visa is and who it helps and some other details that I know you'll find really helpful. So stick around all the way until the end. I'm Latoya McBean Pompey, an immigration lawyer in New York, working with clients nationwide at McBean Law. Reach out to us at McBean Law at 888-462-4006 or at McBeanLaw.com where you can request an appointment with an attorney. Also, before you go today, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you'll be the first to get notice of these videos each week. We're doing a very exciting new series on business immigration and the possibilities for individuals to come to the U.S. or for those who are here in the U.S., what they can do with their business and stay here and have a lawful status and grow their business. Attorney Bobis or Kat Leah, we're going to keep it a little casual here. Kat Leah is going to break it down for us about the E2 process. Kat Leah, welcome to my broadcast. Thank you so much, Attorney McBean. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. And we hope to be able to provide you sufficient information for you to be interested and come to us so we could assist you with your E2. Excellent. So let's talk about the E2 because our viewers from time to time, they hear me talk about many different options for a green card, typically on the family side or the humanitarian side. And now we're going to talk about on the employment side, and this is not a green card process. This is a very different process for individuals, but it is still a great pathway to be here in the United States. Katlia, what is the E2 visa? The E2 visa is a non-immigrant work visa, which allows nationals of particular treaty countries to come to the U.S. to either set up their own business or buy in into an existing business or even buy a franchise and start their business here in the country. Terrific. So people are able to take what they currently have, launch it here, expand it here, or if they'd like to start a new business, they can do that as well, right? That's correct. And the amazing part of the E2 as well is that you're able to bring nationals from your home country to also work for the E2 company. So as long as workers from their country share the same nationality as the E2 investor, they're able to bring in E2 employees into the U.S., thereby giving people outside of the country a chance to come to the U.S. and work. Oh, really? Let's say I'm in Jamaica, right? I have a business there. I want to come to the U.S. and expand that business or launch it here in the U.S. and I I have a couple of employees with me in Jamaica. You're saying that I can actually bring people here with this process and have them work in the business lawfully? Correct. So those E2 employees should be in a managerial capacity at least, or those with special skills that your business would need so we could justify bringing them into the country. Okay. Friends, if you're out there, you're getting these wonderful ideas from this video, have a meeting with us. Attorney Bobis would be the one that you'd be meeting with so that we could break it down a little bit and learn more about those employees, what they do and what they bring to your company. But let's go back to just the basic requirements for a moment of the E2 visa. How long is this visa? Like what type of term would an individual have with this visa here in the U.S.? So every time they enter the U.S., they have the ability to stay in the U.S. for a maximum period of two years on their I-94. However, the visa validity, the one stamped on their passport, that's variable. It's typically a maximum period of five years. So meaning, let's just say the five-year validity of your visa, you keep on entering the U.S. Every time you enter, you get two years, which means that even when you enter on the last day of your visa validity, you still get two years to stay here in the U.S. That's, of course, cut short in case you have to leave the country. You won't be able to come back until and unless you get a new visa on your passport. Okay, so individuals will have to leave the United States to go back to a U.S. embassy and get another visa, right, each time. They're able to get their extension here in the U.S. as well. Based on my experience, typically for E2 investors, they do travel a lot. Typically, they'd want to go back to their home countries, assuming they would have businesses there as well or in other parts of the world. It's better for them to get their visas on their passports to allow multiple entries to the U.S. But if their focus really is making sure that their business here in the U.S becomes very successful and they don't see the need for travel, they don't even have to apply for the visa outside of the country. If they're currently in the U.S., they can just change status here in the U.S. 
Terrific. This E2 visa, this is for our audience. I mean, I know the answer to many of these questions, but for the purpose of this podcast, tell us going back to who is eligible for this. Is this available to just any foreign national or is it narrow to certain countries? Unfortunately, it's not available to everyone around the world. There are specific treaty countries where they are able to take advantage of the E2. There is a list online that they could look at. We can also provide them the list should they want to inquire with us. However, typically for most European countries that they're able to take advantage of the E2, there are Latin American countries, some Asian countries, some Middle Eastern countries, and some African countries who are able to take advantage of the E2, but not everyone, unfortunately. What about the Caribbean? Because I know that a lot of our viewers are also from the Caribbean. Do we have any E2 treaty countries from the Caribbean, like Jamaica? Yes, Jamaica, Grenada, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago. That's all under the Caribbean. Let's say that someone is here in the US and they're out of status. They came on a visa and they overstayed. They have a business. Is this something that they could do? Unfortunately, not automatically. So if a person was in status, we could just file for a change of status easy. However, if they've been out of status, depending on how much time they've spent in the US out of status, less than six months, they should leave the country and apply for the E2 visa outside of the country. But longer than that, it'll be very challenging for them to leave the country and apply for the visa unless there would be waivers applicable. And again, that's like another situation where it's more complex. So we need to speak with a person one in one. Exactly. There are times when I have consultations with folks and if the E2 comes up, what I tell them for those who had overstayed and they have unlawful presence more than a year, more than 12 months of unlawful presence in the United States, this E2 process can still work for them, but it is very, very risky because what it will involve is they would actually have to leave America for an embassy interview. And if they left the United States, they would be faced with unlawful presence bar 10 years to their return. Not unless when they go back to the embassy, if they say, well, I'd like to do this. This is the only chance that I have to really grow my business here in the US and do it lawfully. If they could leave America and show up at their embassy interview with what's called a non-immigrant visa waiver. And that non-immigrant visa waiver, if it's approved, would allow them to get the approval of their E-2 visa as well, and then they could come back into the U.S. and that issue of unlawful presence would just be set aside temporarily for this duration of this visa that they now have. But it's risky, and I've had some entrepreneurs say to me, I don't know if I'm willing to take that risk because I may not get that waiver approved, and we do that waiver, and it works for some people. The issue is, well, you can't file it before you leave America. You have to bring it with you to the embassy. And in that case, that's where the risk comes in. And our entrepreneurs say, "Uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. That's certainly the case. And which is unfortunate, especially for people who have already established themselves here in the country, want to pay taxes lawfully. But there is a situation where they do have to take the risk if and when they want to get the E2 visa. If a person is overseas, Katlia, and they want to start this process, what are some of the things that they should do to start this type of process? They should incorporate here in the country, get their employment identification number from the IRS, get everything sorted out with regard to opening up a business, and then just make sure that, you know, they do have the required source of funds, must be substantial enough for whatever business they want to undertake here in the country, transfer the money to the company's bank account, and then we will be able to start helping them into how they could show that they are actively investing or in the process of investing into their business. Going back. Back to the issue of the substantial amount, because, you know, people, when they hear that, they think, oh my God, is this another million dollar program? I have to pay a million dollars for this or 500,000 or 250,000. What is substantial amount. So the great thing about the E2, there is no number required by the government. However, it must make sense for the business, right? So substantial for a car dealership is different from substantial as compared to a grocery. It has to make sense with whatever business they want to undertake. I've been lucky in the past where a 60,000 investment was approved and we were able to get the person an E2. That was very risky. What we did for that was we invested a lot of money already into the
the business to show that the investment is at risk. It's a balancing act between trying to make sure that your investment is safe as to making sure also that the visa application is strong enough to be approved. Most consular officers and other immigration attorneys would say 100,000 is a safe bet. But again, it has to make sense for the business. 100,000 is not enough for a car dealership. Right. So right, if right. You're opening up a grocery, a nail salon, a small enterprise, that can work. A more ambitious undertaking, then there has to be more money put into the business. The third part of our series, we're going to get into the type of industries and businesses that this is a really great fit for. And we'll go back to the issue of the dollar amount and what makes sense for a certain business. I want to make clear that if you're here in the U.S., I hope that you've heard us loud and clear that if you've overstayed, well, the E2 process may not be a great fit for you because you'll have to leave the U.S. and there are consequences for leaving. But if you are here in the U.S. on a lawful status, what if you're on F1 student, Catlia, who, as you know, with the F1, it comes with a lot of restrictions about working and such. What can an F1 student do if he or she is ambitious, they have a business idea, and they have maybe a loan from their parents, they have like 60 or 70,000 or 100,000 loan from someone, their parent, what can they do with respect to this E2 process? Number one, you have to make the loan to be a gift because it has to be an unconditional gift for loans to be accepted as a possible source of funds. It has to be covered by a collateral. For F1 students with the ambition, with the money to start up their own business, the only thing is you have to make sure that you're able to directly contribute to the business, meaning you have to be qualified for running the business. As far as qualified is concerned, what if you have a certain licensure, like your MBA or something like that, or a law degree? A law degree actually makes sense because typical for new attorneys even to start up their own practice. So that can work, meaning you've already gone through a lengthy amount of time to study the law. There would be a basis for us to say to the government that this person, an investor, a qualified investor, would also be qualified to run their business. Now, let's just say you just graduated with a bachelor's degree. That's different from an MBA where there would be an expectation of more expertise in the subject matter. With a bachelor's degree, I would be hesitant to have them start their own E2 company right away. Maybe take advantage of the OPT first, gain some experience within that particular industry, and then we'll be able to say after completing a bachelor's degree and X amount of time doing actual work within that industry, this person would be qualified for it. For younger people, it would be iffy for USCIS to approve that only because they want to make sure that you as an investor would be successful in your undertaking. Okay, so this whole idea of how things will turn out with your business is important to the government when you're putting together this type of case in terms of what are the likelihood of you succeed in in this in depth with this endeavor. Correct. That's correct. That's great. We're going to stop here. This is a lot of good information, just introductory information about the E2 visa. We're going to pick up with the next episode about the proof, what type of documents and evidence and other things like that. You're going to need to have a really strong chance of winning your case. And then we're going to end again with highlighting certain industries that this is a great fit for. Guys, we at McBean Law, we do all of the process under employment base. Reach out to us if you'd like to discuss whether this E2 is a great fit for you. Be sure to comment below. Let us know additional questions that you have, and we'll take a look at your comments and your questions and address them in the upcoming videos. Thanks so much, Kat Leah, for being with us in this one. It was fun having you. Guys, thanks so much, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.